With three different game settings being used in matchmaking for Halo Reach on the MCC, it can be a little confusing on what kind of game you're going to be jumping into, especially with the difference between title update and vanilla settings. So in this video, I'm going to give you all the details between vanilla and title update settings. Stay tuned out the whole thing to understand all the details. How's it going everybody? It's Kevin here once again, giving you another news informational video when it comes to Halo Tech. We're talking about some Halo Reach title update versus vanilla and zero bloom, no sprint settings. So you guys can kind of know all the little intricate details when it comes to the changes between title update and especially vanilla settings. If you like these kind of informational videos, please make sure to tap that like button so it lets me know you want to see some more content like this. The comment down below what you might have learned from these different changes in the settings. And if you're new to the channel, stay up to date with anything going on in the Halo community. Make sure to tap subscribe, guys, because you keep you guys up to date with everything going on in the Halo. So let's get right into the video here. So one of the biggest issues currently in Halo Reach that you really can't get around is Bloom. Bloom was an interesting take of how Bungie had thought of a way to kind of resolve the issue when it came to the inconsistencies and having to use projectile weaponry when it came to Halo 3, which was a lot of complaints back in that day, and having the solid feel of hit, of hit scan, which Halo 2 has. So what Bungie decided to do is add Bloom, so you can keep the hit scan, but then you can't spam your precision weapons across the map like a sniper rifle, so you can actually move across the map. And that was a way to kind of have a nice little compromise, but a lot of people didn't really enjoy Bloom. To me, I don't find it too big of an issue, but a lot of people wish to see it kind of reduced a little bit, and that's exactly what Title Update did. The title update did that 343 added in, by the way. 343 started working on Halo back in Halo Reach, if you didn't know. Uh, with the title update, what they did with the DMR, Needle Rifle, and Pistol, it reduced the bloom from 100% to 85%. So that reticle expansion would collapse a lot faster and would not bloom as much. They also added in zero bloom when it came to the MLG settings, uh, as a lot of pros requested that. Now, it doesn't mean that the zero bloom means that it's like a pinpoint accurate laser machine every shot you do now it still has a little bit of spread maintained within the weapon itself as well but zero blend basically means within the 4v4 maps that your shot's going to go exactly where you're aiming now, as you can assume, reducing the max spread of the bloom by 80 to 85% from 100% for the DMR certainly helped out increase the pacing, help reduce that time to kill and speed up the game a little bit. But the same kind of uh, reduction to 85% for the needle rifle was quite interesting as it, with the way that rifle is balanced before the title update and just reducing the bloom by 80, max bloom by 85% when you shoot, Again, the bloom retracts as soon as you can shoot. So basically, this weapon, the needle rifle, has zero bloom to it. And it's fully auto, and it's a seven shot kill, and it does a great job where this weapon is basically, after title day, has become a power weapon to pick up. So if you guys ever see a needle rifle on the map, absolutely need to use that weapon because it's hands down way better than the DMR because it basically has no bloom for how quickly the reticle retracts. Now, also, there's a, there's a great way of kind of panicking players quite a bit as well, as you have to, it's a faster fire rate and it's fully auto, where their players are getting hit by so many shots at once, they tend to panic and will kind of spam their shots back at you. But you have a basically a zero bloom rifle and you can slay super quickly with us. So pick up that Nina rifle when you can, guys, because uh, the modified bloom for title update has made that thing into a laser beam. It's really awesome to use. Now the reduction in bloom didn't really help out the pistol a whole lot. Obviously it did make it a little bit better, but the, the pistol itself has a pretty good spread and the reticle maxes out pretty damn fast, but it's a great weapon to kind of spam some shots at close range, which I think it was kind of its intended purpose, but you still have the ability to pick off guys at range if you don't have a precision weapon. So. The pistol also has a pretty good option as well. Another big change happened is what is called bleed through. If you guys don't know what bleed through is, basically what happens is that you have shields and you have health, right? And what bleed through generally does say, like in the previous Halo titles, you can damage a guy to a decent amount and then you know their shields pop, which means that they're one shot, right? But oftentimes in the previous Halo games, especially like say in Halo 3, you can put three shots into a player and then melee them through the before the shields would pop and you still get the kill. 
in the vanilla settings, say like in uh, Griff Ball or uh, Infection, or in, especially in Invasion that use vanilla settings, uh, that there is no bleed through, meaning that you have to burn through the shields first before you can get those kills on their health. So you absolutely need to wait till the shields pop before throwing in a melee to try to get a kill. With the title update settings that you'll see in your normal social slayer settings and also in the MLG settings for the uh, rank playlist here, that you can actually get a three shot melee for the kill when, you, when using a DMR. So effectively, you can put three shots on the player, their shields will not pop. When you melee them, their, the damage will bleed through the shields into their health, killing that player. So keep in mind, guys, when you're playing, especially in Invasion, this is where I really notice this. you got to make sure you pop those shields first before you go in for that melee or go for that one-shot headshot. I believe that... Bungie originally tried to do this on the, all those settings. It's mainly just so you have a much more visual confirmation when a player becomes one shot. So it leaves less guesswork of when yeah, that, that player is available to be shot for like in the head for the one shot kill kind of thing. Uh, which was a big issue like, like I said back in Halo 3 with the inconsistency of the BR. You couldn't, and there no hit markers, you couldn't really tell exactly how much damage you dealt without really knowing exactly what the shield flare level was before you can put a headshot into a guy to get a kill. So I'm thinking that's probably why Bungie went with this decision. Uh, though I don't necessarily agree with it, I do like having the bleed through option to be probably the best way to go about with Halo. They did that with Halo 5 as well. They tried bringing it over to Halo 2 anniversary and a lot of people didn't like that as well. Bleed through is kind of a necessary thing when it comes to Halo. With the title update became a big change to everyone's favorite ability in Halo Reach, the armor lock, as uh, you know, we all know, it, it was quite annoying at an initial release. As basically, when a player would go into armor lock, they'd be completely invincible, which was quite annoying because it would lead to just delaying inevitable situations for the most part, and it was quite, you know, like I said, annoying to deal with. So, what they ended up doing with armor lock is obviously still maintaining it in a lot of game modes actually can have a lot of functions especially like in btb and in invasion uh where you can block various uh, damaging abilities uh, but what they decided to do with armor lock is that uh you would have your armor lock battery if you want to call it that and if your player goes if you're playing against someone they go into armor lock the title update you can keep shooting at them which would deplete the battery life of the armor lock which making it pop out faster now say you don't want to waste your ammo, but you want to kick a guy out of armor lock, what you can do is toss a grenade at them once they go into armor lock, so the damage of a grenade will kick them out of armor lock, and then you can go ahead and attack them again. Another thing that happened with the title update version of armor lock, they nullified what's called plasma shedding, what's kind of noted by the community. Basically what would happen if you would you know, see a guy coming running at you, you'd throw a sticky grenade, stick him right in the chest, right? You're like, okay, I got the easy kill. Nah, in the vanilla version update, you go in armor lock, the grenade explodes, the player lives through it, and then they can pop back up and take you out. Quite annoying, yes. And so, the title update version, if you stick a player with a grenade, then they go in armor lock, they still die. But if they go in armor lock and then you stick them with a grenade, it just kicks them out of armor lock. Now, I definitely had this happen when I was playing in Invasion during the, uh, the flight test where I stuck a guy with a grenade, he went in armor lock, lived through it, killed me, Quite frustrating, yes. And so keep that in mind. That's a big change when it comes to armor lock. So now every time you see someone in like the Team Slayer or anything like that, you can just throw a grenade, kick them right out. Or if you see them in Invasion, proceed with much caution. Another armor ability that's not a big change is actually active camo. Got a big, a little bit of a nerf as well. I saw its usage time reduced by 15 seconds, which is quite a lot of time. When you think about it in game time, 15 seconds can mean the world of difference right there for sure. Uh, basically, they said they want to make it so players use it more sparingly. So if you guys are playing like an invasion, you have a longer active camo usage where compared to in title update, like say in Team Slayer, you have less time to use it there. And also guys, lastly here, the another big change that happened with the title update settings is disabling the sword block. You guys don't know what we're talking about here. Uh, original reach where basically they had a, a new ability in the game where if someone attacked you with a sword, you didn't have any way to combat them, right? If you timed a melee 
perfectly with their attack, you would actually block the sword, much like you see in Halo 3, where you just have sword clashes going against each other. Now, I do believe with the... It would take two melee, two well timed melees to block, and then the third one would just kill him no matter what. So you'd still take damage. But in um in the update version, they actually removed sword blocking in title update playlist. So Matt, like I said, in Team Slayer for social, yes, you will not be able to block the sword. Same thing with also competitive settings on top of that. But in Invasion, in also in Infection, which you're left to see a lot of swords as well as Griff Ball, you actually can block sword attacks with a melee. So guys, those are all the big changes when it comes to the title update settings versus vanilla settings in Halo Reach. If you learned something today, make sure to tap that like button. Let's know if you want to see some more content like this. Leave a comment down below what your thoughts are on the changes between title update and vanilla. Do, we, uh, do you guys want to see George's want no bloom all the whole thing over? You know, let me know in the comment section down below. I do read all of them and try to apply the most of them as well. And if you're new to the channel, we'll stay updated with anything going on in the Halo community or keep up to date with more Halo Reach goodness, which is going to be a big focus this month, guys. Make sure you're tasked, subscribe to keep yourselves updated with everything going on in Halo. And if you miss any content from me, check out the videos on the screen right now. And I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace out.